In this video, I'll give an example of how we refactor toward using interfaces and abstract classes. Those are two topics that my students tell me they sometimes are confused about, they don't quite understand how they work. Um, in a lot of introductory textbooks, there's a design upfront approach where you start with an interface and an abstract class and then you make subclasses of it. Um, I'm going to take a more emergent architecture approach, uh, which is advocated in books like Clean Code, to say that we introduce interfaces and abstract classes when they give us meaning when they give us better code. So let's take a look at this example. Um, kind of a standard academic example. Here's a grading tool. Um, so you can enter a grade as a percent, so say 100, and depending on which grading scheme you choose, you get uh, potentially different answers. So in the uh, conventional approach, um, right, 90 is an A, but 89 is a B, and 79 is a C. Um, incidentally, this conventional approach has no epistemological or philosophical basis. It's completely arbitrary, so don't use that one. You could use something like triage grading, uh, which is what I use in most of my classes. Um, you can see my webpage about that. I'll try to add a link into the details. Um, but suffice it to say for now that something like a 33 is an F, something like a 34 is a D. Uh, there's also been some talk in academic circles about specifications grading. And one of the ideas behind specifications grading is that uh, you meet a threshold or you don't. So 90 is an A and 89 is an F. So let's take a look at how this works. Um, in the, uh, you know, let's start with something simple, conventional grading. So uh, I have each of the ranges specified by their, their bottoms, right? 90% uh, to 100% is an A and so on. Um, and then we have a simple loop here that walks through each of these uh, potential letter grades and then assigns the proper one. Um, notice that uh, in conventional grading, the ranges are closed on the bottom, right? So 90% uh, itself counts as an A, not a, not a B. Um, I'm using a very simple enumerated type here, a letter grade. Uh, triage grading ends up looking very similar to conventional grading, um, right? It's just the these values are different and uh, the ranges are actually open on the bottom. They're closed on the top. Um, specifications grading is a little bit different. Uh, when we instantiate it, we'll give it a, a threshold value um, and it just says, hey, if you're above that threshold, you get an A, otherwise you get an F. Um, so then grade tool is a simple JavaFX application that brings everything together. So uh, in the first pass of this that we have, kind of our simple approach, we have three objects instantiated, one for each of those different types of uh, grading schemes. Um, we have our combo box, our input field and output field. Um, and you can see how the uh, user interface is constructed. There's really no great tricks here, just some you know JavaFX magic to make the uh, binding work between different fields. Um, this upgrade grade method is the one that does kind of the heavy lifting. It's, it's the uh, conduit between the view layer and the model layer. Um, we look to see what's currently selected from the combo box. If it's uh, the zeroth item, the first item, then we use conventional triage or specifications. Okay, so you can always pause the video and you know take a closer look at the code. For now, let's look at what are the design problems, right? So one of the most clear ones I think is, is this. Right, based on based on this case, we're doing just the same thing, but with three different objects. But the signature otherwise is, is exactly the same, right? They all have this convert method. Um, so let's try to solve that problem first. And so what we can realize is that we have three different ways of doing grade assignment. And in fact, this is a good example of the strategy design pattern. So how can we deal with this? Let's uh, let's make a new interface, and we'll call it grading scheme, and we'll say that all grading schemes uh, need to have a method that is returns a, a letter grade, and is called convert, and it takes a percent value as an argument. Right. So the interface is is that simple. It just says, hey, all grading schemes need to have this. All right. So what happens when we make all of our grading schemes implement that interface? Um, the compiler is perfectly happy here because we already have the method that uh, provides that. Sorry, we already have the method that fulfills that interface. Um, so let's go down to specifications grading, add the same thing, implements grading scheme, and of course triage grading. Okay. So, so far all we've done is, is add code. This, this doesn't really give us any value, um, but let's go back to our uh, UI class. 
Now we can do something interesting. We can say instead of saying this is a combo box of strings, we can say it's a combo box of grading schemes. All right, so what does that let us do? Well, down here where we initialize, um, we need to say instead of this being three strings, it's going to be actually conventional triage and uh, specs. All right, so we actually construct the list of those three model level objects, which is you know kind of interesting. Uh, it gets much more interesting when we get down here because now we don't need to ask the combo box to get an index and then do some kind of crazy switching. And you know when when you read books like Clean Code, they say this this kind of structure in code, right, where you have a switch statement and it just does different things based on a value. Um, that's really a, a code smell. That what we want there is uh, instead delegation, and that's exactly what we're going to move toward here, because we can say give me the selected grading scheme from the combo box. And this gives me back a grading scheme. That will be one of these three things, but at this point I don't care which one it was. I know it's one of those three, so I can directly call scheme convert the input. And then, uh, yeah, and this gets much shorter and cleaner. Uh, let's run it and see how it works. Here it is. So we see immediately that the presentation is, is a little ugly. We'll cross that bridge next. Um, but if we put in a value like, say, 89, that comes up as an F in specs grading, comes up as an A in triage grading, comes up as a B in conventional grading. So that's perfect. So what do we see here? You know, anybody who spent any time with Java will recognize this as the output of the toString method, the, the default implementation of toString. Um, and so in the name of uh, expediency, let's just override toString. So we can say override public string toString and just have this return uh, conventional. Now I'll point out for those of you who are uh, pedantic or detail-oriented that this is actually crossing the model view barrier now, right? I'm putting something into my model layer that is actually intended for the viewer to consume. And a, a more elegant approach would be to separate the rendering of this thing from the, the model layer itself. Um, but that gets pretty far afield from my example that's about interfaces and abstract classes. So I'm just going to take the simple approach here. So we'll go down to specs grading and see that I paste that. Yeah. So we can say this is specifications. Now we can be a little fancier here and make sure we include the threshold that's sent. There, that's good. And then uh, triage should be very simple. Good. All right, let's run it again and take a look. There, that looks pretty good. Well, although that's, you know, not presenting correctly. So let's fix that. Uh, that's um, specs grading. Simplest solution is just to take that out. <laughs> It'll read a little nicer. And we can see what threshold was sent in there. Okay, good. So this shows us the value of the interface that now, uh, you know, particularly here, right, all of the objects that our grading schemes can be treated the same way. And all we have to know about them at this point is that they have a convert method. Uh, and also, you know, that they have a two-string method. But every object in Java has two strings, so we don't need to add that to our interface. Um, hopefully it's clear from here that if we wanted to add some other kinds of grading schemes, we could certainly do that. Maybe add some more constants here, uh, and then just put them into this list. Um, notice also that we could just instantiate the uh, schemes right here too. We don't actually need the constants. We could just say you know, new conventional, new triage, new specifications, but this is, is good enough for now. Okay, so what would the next step be in refactoring, right? Hopefully this, this uh, justifies for you why interfaces are, are useful. Um, well, if we look at conventional grading and triage grading, they have fundamentally the same algorithm inside of them. Um, the difference is the, the values, right, which are essentially just parameters to this algorithm, and whether or not we are uh, closed at the top, at the bottoms, or open at the bottoms, right? whether it's greater than or greater than or equal to. So the interface grading scheme, it gives you a, a contract. It says that all 
objects that implement this interface must provide this method. Um, but it doesn't tell us what that implementation can look like. So that gets us the difference between interfaces and abstract classes. One of the main, most important differences is that your interface is really just a contract, whereas your abstract class can have implementations. So uh, let's see what that looks like. Um, let's make a new class here, and I'll call it bounded range grading scheme. The idea here is it, it's any grading scheme where we have simple bounded ranges for A, B, C, D, and F grades. And in the interest of time, I've typed this up already. So let's see what this can look like. Uh, so in order to deal with whether or not it's open at the bottom or closed at the bottom, I used an enumerated type. And this example also shows how Java's enumerated types are, are really fantastic. Uh, in many programming languages, enumerated types are just masks around integers. But in Java, they're proper objects, and so they can have real behaviors. So I can, I can build right into this value the idea that it, uh, it uses the greater than operation. And here we use greater than or equal to. Um, I have a list of bounds, and I have a mode, and I have a constructor that simply takes the list of bounds and the mode and do a little bit of error checking on it. Finally, we have our convert algorithm, which says, well, given this percent, we'll just walk through all the possible letter grade values, check those bounds, and see if we get accepted, and uh, you know, F is always the, the one that falls off at the end. Okay, so we've taken essentially this algorithm and moved it into this abstract class. So that means we can refactor this one and say, well now this extends bounded range grading scheme. I don't actually need this method anymore because the implementation will be inherited from the superclass. Instead, what I can do is make a constructor that invokes the superclass constructor, sending it my particular ranges and the fact that conventional grading is closed at the bottom. Right, so 90% is an A, anything less than 90% is not an A. Um, so the algorithm now is, is uh, inherited, it's shared from this abstract class. Uh, triage grading will be very similar. I can get rid of this and I can say add a constructor that invokes the superclass constructor. Oops, but let's do this first. So this extends bounded range grading scheme and we'll send it the ranges and the mode, which in this case is open at the bottom. So triage grading and conventional grading have both been um, almost gutted, right? Because they had that same implementation. It was fundamentally a DRY violation, right? A don't repeat yourself violation. We've pulled that out into this abstract superclass and they can both inherit now this implementation. Um, you know, and you, you run into this problem of, well, you could also override it and make it do different things and create a nasty nest of uh, calling superclass methods. And, and this is where, you know, the general advice is extends can be a little bit dangerous. Maybe this design isn't actually any cleaner than it was before. Um, but again, my argument here is not that this is the best solution, but that this motivates the desire for having abstract classes. So uh, what about specifications grading? It doesn't have the same structure as the other two, so it will stay exactly the way it is. We're not going to change it. Okay, let's run the grading tool. All right, so the UI still looks right. Let's take a value like uh, 90 is coming in as an A, 89 comes in as a B, that's good. Um, in triage, it turns out that uh, one third is an F, um, but anything above that is a D. And we see that here, good. And uh, specifications grading, again, this should simply be um, what it was before because there was no modifications. There, so hopefully that gives you some idea of how we can use the principles of emergent architecture to introduce interfaces and abstract classes at the point that they solve actual refactoring problems, right? So rather than be caught in this big design upfront idea, we can recognize when we have multiple agents that have similar behavior and simplify the code by adding better abstractions. Thanks for watching.